and I'm studying the snow algae. Um, it's a special microscopic algae that live on the snow surface. And if you look over here, you can see there's patches of green and hopefully you can see some patches of red uh, if the light conditions permit it. Top yeah. Certainly what we're seeing is that in the warmer parts of the peninsula, blooms are moving higher up onto local glaciers and ice caps. I think we will probably see more coverage on smaller islands in Antarctica. With, with the snow algae blooms, um, obviously they, they rely on slushy snow to actually bloom. Um, so they need liquid water to actually um, reproduce and, and, and divide and bloom. So if, if, if the climate gets too warm um, and that snow actually comes very slushy and it melts out very fast, you're losing that habitat for the snow algae to actually bloom in the first place. So you're wiping out a complete ecosystem in potentially one year. In terms of the amount of carbon that's um, required to actually make these blooms in Antarctica, it's equivalent to about the amount of carbon that's been emitted by about 875,000 average UK petrol car journeys. So it seems a lot, but in terms of a global carbon budget, it's insignificant. Now we have this baseline of where they are, we can then see whether the, the blooms will start increasing, as the model suggests in, in the future, and whether to date they've actually been increasing in size um, over the past 10 or 20 years.